Now let's go ahead and take a look at the economy tab. So the economy tab is where you configure all in-app purchases and, and virtual currency transactions for your game. And this is really the heart of any free-to-play game. So it's really important to take the time to go through this. So let's start, start by taking a look at the currencies tab. So the idea here is that you've got uh, a, a, a set of different virtual currencies that you can track for your game. And you can add actually as many different virtual currencies as you want. And each virtual currency has a code and a display name. And you can also set for each virtual currency an initial deposit, which is how many units of currency a player gets when they first create an account. You can also set a recharge rate. The recharge rate is how many units of virtual currency the player gets uh, recharged automatically. So for example, in a game like Candy Crush Saga, where you want to have, let's say, a heart system, and every hour you get one heart back automatically, uh, this is where you would go to set that heart system up. So this is an example where the game would give you five hearts by, by default, and then every hour you would get one heart back up to a maximum of five. So you can, you can configure those kinds of properties in here as well. It's some nice shortcuts. We have the notion of the catalog. The catalog is the master list of every single item that a player can purchase in the game or otherwise get, get provisioned in the game. And you can have different catalog versions. The idea here is that a version is meant to tie to versions of the game. So every, as you create a new version of the game, you might, for example, create new, uh, new catalog versions. You don't have to. Uh, some people might, for example, have one version of catalog for iOS, another version for Android, say, uh, or you can just have one master version. Um, inside the catalog are all different items you can purchase. Uh, you can edit the catalog dynamically by, by, for example, going here and editing properties in the catalog. If you want to, you can also uh, create the catalog by creating some items interactively, downloading it as a JSON file. You can, for example, you know, take a look at, uh, at what one of the JSON files looks like. And then this, for example, shows you what the, what the catalog looks like as, as JSON. You can edit the raw JSON text, and then if you want to, you can then upload that JSON back into the, uh, the, 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 the system to change your catalog. What some of our customers do, for example, is they actually store the catalog as a JSON file in their source control system, and then they use our admin API to automatically upload the JSON file every time their build system creates a new version of the game. So that's also something you can do if you want to. But for now, let's just look at the, the interactive editor here for the catalog. So let's take, for example, we, we, have, we have different kinds of items in our catalog. We have, we have durable items and we have consumable items. So a durable item might be an item like this flying boots here. This is an item where once you buy it, it's going to last forever in your inventory. And every item in our catalog has a unique ID. In this case, it's called flying boots. Some sort of class, this is optional. The class field is optional. And this is used by the code in your game to figure out what to do with a player who, who has this item equipped. We have, again, another optional field called tags. Tags are any set of properties you want to type in and store for an item that your game might later use for really whatever purpose you want. So for example, you could use tags to designate certain items as hot or limited time only or uh, you know, a sale item or, or something like this. Or, or you could use tags to, for example, distinguish between armor versus potions versus uh, equipment. You, know, you can have different categories in your catalog and the tags could be one way to keep track of the different catalogs, the categories. The display name and the description is information that will be shown to the player or, or that you can use to display to the player to describe what the item is. Later, we're going to have ways to help make it easier to localize this information. But for now, it's just in English or whatever language your game is in. Uh, you can set arbitrary key value pairs on items in the catalog. So just like you could set key value pairs for your game title, you can also set key value pairs for the item in the catalog. This is almost like the, think of this as the database properties for every item in the catalog. Uh, you can put this to whatever you want, strings, variables, even, even JSON data if you want to. You can set prices for items. Prices can be set in one or more different virtual currencies as well as real money. The real money is important for doing in-app purchases. So for example, if you're doing uh, an in-app purchase, for, for example, let's say you want to sell an item which is 10,000 uh, uh, brownie, brownie points, think of them like gold coins. So if you want to sell 10,000 brownie points and you want to sell it for uh, $6 through Apple, you would create, in this case, uh, a pack of brownie points, 10,000 brownie points. You'd set a real money price, in this case, $5.99. Uh, and then you'd go in and actually define this as a bundle where if the player purchases this item, they automatically get 10,000 brownie points. That would be an example of, uh, of how a bundle might be used. Uh, and then what the player would do is you and your game would process the transaction through Apple for $5.99. And unfortunately, Apple does not let us do this for you. So you have to create the in-app purchase yourself in Apple and track the purchase. And once the purchase is done, Apple gives you a receipt. 
and then we actually have in our system we have a uh, we have a uh, API call in this case it's, it's called validate iOS receipt you would call this function you'd pass in the receipt that you got from Apple we would then verify with Apple that the receipt is valid we would verify that we've never seen this receipt before that it's not a, a replay attack and once we've confirmed that that all checks out we would then go ahead and, and we would then credit the player's account with the 10,000 brownie points they just purchased. So that's an example of how you might handle uh, a real money purchasing. Uh, so that's an example of a durable item. A consumable item might be something like, for example, this health potion, where a health potion uh, has three usage counts. And the way this works is every time someone, uh, when this item goes into the inventory, it goes into three uses, and then your game can consume those uses. And once you get down to zero uses, the item is then no longer available. So again, if you go to our documentation uh, and you take a look here, you'll see, uh, let's take a look here under uh, player item management, and you can see consume item. So this is a function you would call consume item that would basically use up uh, a number of uses from this item. And once it gets down to zero, you get the error message, no remaining uses, which would come back to tell you that you're done using this item. So that's an example of a consumable. Another example of a consumable, a little different, is an example of an item that has a limited time period. So here's an example of an experience boost. And you can imagine I've set an attribute called 2x, so in this case, this item will give you an experience boost of 2x, your normal experience points, but it only is going to last for one day. And once that time period expires, this item will automatically expire out of the player's inventory. So that can be useful for tracking things that, can, that, are, that expire. Uh, another useful feature we have is this notion of drop tables. You can also think of these as loot tables or random probability tables. It's essentially a list of items uh, in our catalog uh, with a different set of weights. And these weights contribute to create uh, probabilities. These are very useful for any time you want to have, let's say, a treasure chest or you're doing a, a collectible card game and you want to have uh, a collectible card game and you want to have uh, a card pack where you buy the card pack and there's different probability of different, getting different cards. This is where you would create a drop table. And you can actually, these things can be nested hierarchically. So you can have multiple drop tables nested inside of other drop tables. Uh, and once you've got your drop tables just the way you like them with all the different probabilities just the way you want it, you go to the catalog and you can actually go into an item and you can set the contents of that item as being, as coming from one of the drop tables. So in this case, this is a notion of a locked treasure chest. And it's a treasure chest. Uh, it has one use, which means you can only open it once. Uh, it has no usage period and uh, no particular properties. It has an icon property, which is telling the catalog, your game, what, what icon to show for it. Uh, you can't buy it. This is a treasure chest you only can get through uh, combat. And the contents is, are 100, 100 brownie points and three items chosen randomly from that locked chest contents drop table we were just looking at. And in this case, it's what's called a container, which means that when you buy this item, it goes into your inventory as a, a container. And you can't get the contents out until after you actually open the container. And we actually have an API call for that. If we go to player item management, we have this, this API call uh, called unlock container item. So you would call unlock container item on the item in your inventory. It would open it, and it would then tell you all the items you got uh, having opened this container. And in this case, when you uh, not only is this container uh, going to give you those items from that locked chest contents uh, drop list, this also is a locked container in the sense that it has a key field filled in. And by having this key field filled in here with the key, when you try to open this container, it's not going to work unless you happen to have uh, this particular uh, an item of this key item in your inventory. And you can actually see in the documentation here, if you happen to try to open it and you don't have that item in your, in your inventory, you're going to get the error key not owned. Uh, which case it won't actually open the treasure chest unless you have uh, the key. So that's an example of a locked treasure chest. So okay, so that completes uh, looking at the economy tab.